welcome back. I am Associate Minister Sherry Knotts, and I am here again to talk with you about biblical fasting and prayer. I have a few notes here, so if you see me looking down, I just want to make sure that I'm staying on task and that we're making the most out of our minutes here. So can you imagine what would happen if the Lord were to call you on a fast, either for yourself for a situational change or for someone else. Can you imagine the praise report that you would have? I get joy when I think about, and that was a long time ago, but same God back then is the same God right now. So why do we fast? Well, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, we learned the last session that uh, fasting is a form of worship. We know that worship, we admire God, we tell God how much we love him, we thank him, we remember how he brought us from all that stuff back here and he brought us to where we are. We're all the more better every time we've been through some things. He's kept us and he's made us stronger. He's grown our faith. And so that's worship. Well, when he calls you on a fast, not only is that obedience, because uh, second, excuse me, First Samuel 15 and 22 tell us that obedience is better than sacrifice. So when you when you say, okay, God, I'm gonna go on this fast. I'm gonna do it according to what you say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow your parameters. That's obedience, right? That uh, lets God know I'm going to do what you say. Have your way, God. So when we talk about the warfare weapon. Okay, well, warfare is that things that are going awry in your life for no natural reason at all, right? We, we can't find a reason for all these things to just boom, 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 just happen. Like, that only happens in the movies. Well, that's not true because if you sit down and talk to me in my life, huh, some of the things that have happened in my life, it's unreal. It doesn't, this stuff doesn't happen to normal people. But the Word tells us that we're not normal, right? We are a peculiar priesthood we're a chosen generation we're set apart by God so we should not expect what everyone else expects to be normal so when these things start to happen instead of murmuring and complaining we're going to set the stage and we're going to start praising and worshiping God we're going to thank him for our life health and strength we thank him for our jobs we thank him for uh, food on the table we thank him for the shoes we have we may not have one pair of shoes but God I thank you for them what that one pair of shoes that I have on my feet because there's somebody somewhere who cannot say that thank God for shelter and we're going we're gonna to confuse the enemy when we do that. We praise God for who he is. And, and during that time, that's what fasting is for. It's that time where we're setting some time aside. I'm simply setting some time aside for the Lord. And I'm letting him know how important he is. It's a time of consecration. And all consecration is is just being set apart for God. We're going to do it on purpose, all right? Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says that if my people who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Okay? In the Bible, Daniel fasted to hear from God. Esther fasted for favor from the king. These are some reasons why they fasted. So what should you expect during your time of fasting? You can expect headaches. You can expect to be short-tempered. You can expect to be hungry. You can expect for people to invite you to every type of party, cookout, barbecue, celebration, whatever you call it. You can expect those things. But here's what you can also expect. You can expect God to be able to help you, to assist you, to keep you from being so hungry. You can expect him to ease the headaches. He'll give you the words to say to ease those headaches off. And even if you do decide to participate in someone's cookout or decide to go to somebody's baby shower or whatever, God will give you the grace to not partake in the food. I know what I'm talking about because I was on a three-day dry fast this year during the 4th of July season, and I had family coming from out of town, and I also had to prepare some homemade coleslaw for a friend of mine who lived out of town. I was invited to her cookout. So I had to hear I not only had to buy the groceries, I had to prepare, prepare the food, and I had to serve the food. Had to do all of this without tasting not one single drop. Now, a good cook tastes their food before they put it out. And I'm a good cook, but I was fasting during this time. And let me tell you what the Lord did. He kept me from getting any headaches. He kept me from being tempted, and he kept me from being hungry. So I'm not telling you anything that has not been tried and true. I'm telling you what God will do. When you, um, when you fast, expect, to hear, expect for God to hear you. 
expect for God to come to your side, to come to your assistance. That's who he is. He's that God that rescues you because when you get those headaches just in your stomach start saying, hey, hey, don't we eat around this time? And your, your body, if you're like me, you like a Pepsi every now and then, and your body say, hey, wait a minute now. You just passed that Pepsi. Don't you pass that good Pepsi up? Now, that's the thing. You got to go turn down for what? Trust me, if God calls you on a fast, God knows what holiday's coming up. He knows whose birthday it is, whose baby shower it is, who's going to invite you to a cookout. He knows all of that. He knows all of that. And there's not a reason that you cannot be obedient to the Lord because God will see about you. Biblical reasons for fasting is to strengthen your prayer life, to seek God's guidance, to express grief, to seek deliverance to express repentance, to humble yourself before God, to express concern for the work of God, for ministry and needs of others, to overcome temptation and dedicate yourself to God, and to express love and worship God. This has been another installation of Biblical Fasting and Prayer. I look forward to seeing you on the next time. Until then, if you are led to fast, Seek the Lord about it, go about your father's business, and understand and know there is nothing that he will call you to that he will not bring you through. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for another installation of biblical fasting and prayer. I pray that your people are taking notes and reading the scriptures, understanding what it means as far as their life is concerned. If you are calling my brothers and sisters on a fast, Father, I pray that they will be obedient and that they would seek to please you and you only. God, give them grace and give them strength to resist the enemy, to restrain and to know the parameters of the fast that you were calling them on for your divine reason. It is in your son Jesus' name that we do thank you and praise you. Amen and amen.